we, we right. were so worried about missing out on stuff and letting things go. And we're not nearly enough worried about like, what am I missing out on? Like, what is, what could my life be like if I'm not buried in stuff? You're listening to the Decluttering Club podcast. I'm your host, Sarah Mueller, and it's my mission to equip women to declutter their homes, their time, and their lives so that they can cherish what truly matters. You are listening to the Decluttering Club podcast, episode number 48. Today, I am talking with my friend, Brooke Elder, family of six, sells everything, declutters everything to sail around the world. Oh my gosh. I love your story so much, Brooke. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah. I'm so excited to share this because it definitely has been a crazy ride. (laughs) This is what we call an actual adventure. (laughs) It's like, oh my gosh. And you have the best story. So before we get into that, um, do you want to introduce yourself really quick? Tell us about your family, where you're from, what you do. Yeah. So like you said, my name is Brooke Elder and I have four kids ranging from 17 to almost 10. And we have been like, what I call like a full-time family. My husband stays at home. Uh, he has his own online business. I have an online business and we homeschool our kids. So it's been super fun to just be with my kids and watch them grow up and show them different parts of the world. And a couple of years ago, we were looking for ways that we can help our kids see more of the world get out of the rut that we were kind of in and Mm -hmm. we wanted them to become closer to God. So as we were praying about what we should do, the thought just kept coming to us to sell everything and go buy a boat. And I was like, no, no, no. Like, let's do something else. Like not that, like what else could we do? You know, there's all (laughs) kinds of things, right? Like buy a boat. And and did you have experience with sailing at that point? Was that like something you guys were doing at that point? Yeah. So I, I grew up sailing, but I lived in Utah. So I grew up sailing on lakes and, um, I did in college live on a boat, but it was out of the great salt lake. It was at the dock. I never took it out. Like it was just cause it was free rent. Cause it was my parents' boat. <laughs> you know. Okay. So I had that like experience, but living on the ocean is a totally different experience than that. <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. Okay. So you, you have this, this idea it pops in your head, sell everything and buy a boat. And so what happens next? So we started watching a lot of YouTube and stuff of other people that have done it so we could get a good feel for it. And like, I actually, to be honest, I'm a little terrified of sailing. So (laughs) the reason is, because when I was two years old, we were sailing and I was trying to like get my feet in the water. And I still remember this. And I like, couldn't reach and couldn't reach. And I ended up slipping off the boat and my dad didn't notice. And I remember the boat sailing away and it was my, (laughs) it was my 16 year old uncle that noticed, like, luckily I had a life jacket on. So it was just bobbing in the water, you know? Okay. (laughs) <laughs> but my uncle came and he saved me. So I've always had this fear of like falling off the boat. So in a wow. typical sailboat, when the wind hits it, it tips, you know, and that always like made me super nervous. So the only way that I could do this is if we had a catamaran. So that has like two holes. So okay. that way it's much more stable. There's lots more living play- space and stuff. So I'm like, talking myself into it. Like, this is going to be okay. And, but it still was scary. Like anytime you take that big, massive leap into anything, it's really scary. So we just kept taking like one little step at a time. So the first step was like, we all needed passports. So we all got passports and that was fine. And then it was like, well, we can start decluttering. What are things that we don't really need? You know, so we started getting rid of those things. And then like, things just kept escalating. We found the boat that we wanted, like all these things. And we're like, Hey, we're time. Like we need to sell everything. Cause I'm someone like, I looked at all the stuff that we had and Mm -hmm. I realized like Mm -hmm. stuff doesn't actually matter. And why do I want to pay a storage unit to hold my stuff that who knows how long we were going to be gone? Like Mm -hmm. maybe it was a year, maybe it's five years. Like I may not even like that stuff anymore. Like our furniture may be out of style or like whatever. So I'm like, let's just Mm -hmm. sell it all and get rid of it. (laughs) <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh. So you sold it. I love, I love you baby stepped your way in though. I think that's really important, right? Like this huge goal, like to, to even fathom taking six people like on a boat and, and get it. Like, I think a lot of people would be like 
frozen, but I like how you were like, okay, passports. Oh, okay. We can get a passport. Right. And now like, so you baby stepped your way in. That is amazing. And so now you're decluttering and you're like literally getting rid of everything. So did you end up keeping anything behind? How did that work out? So we got like at Costco, you can get those big black bins with the yellow lids. Yeah. You know, yeah. so each of us got a bin. So I had okay. six bins. We actually had seven because okay. it was like, if there's any like leftovers to put in there, you know, but like my Christmas stuff, I got rid of a lot of it. Um, mm -hmm. We got rid of our Christmas tree, like things that you think of that you would like put into storage, right? Like we mm -hmm. just got mm -hmm. rid of all of it. And wow. my kids didn't, it was really good for my kids because they went through and they were seeing what things are actually important to them and what mm -hmm. things don't really matter. And some things mm. it was really hard. Like I have a daughter who is obsessed with stuffed animals. And so it was also deciding like what things go into storage, what things stay and what things do we donate? And we had a lot of conversations about like, think of all these things that you're donating and how happy it's going to make a child that maybe can't afford this and they get to have this, you know? So they got to see that process. Um, and it, it wasn't something that happened like in a month or two. This was like over a year period that we were yeah. like every month we would take one room and we would declutter. And then once we got through the house, we would go and do it again and do mm -hmm. it again, <laughs> do it again. Mm -hmm. So even, like more like, and more rounds of yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Even all the stuff we had put into like our permanent storage before yeah. we moved, we went through again. And I actually got rid yeah. of one entire bin because I'm like, because I was saving books and stuff like that. And then I'm like, do I really need this? You know? Mm -hmm. And at that point I was so detached from stuff mm -hmm. that I was like, none of this stuff really matters. You know, mm -hmm. it's my family mm -hmm. that matters. And that mm -hmm. really is it. So it was, it was very freeing to go mm -hmm. through that whole experience. Oh my gosh. And we'll get to that. Cause we, you, <laughs> you have an incredible story. So we're going to go there. Um, so like, like, what is it called? Uh, not spoiler, but, uh, <laughs> foreshadowing anyways. But, um, so yeah. So did you guys keep, um, obviously you took some things with you. Like, how yes. did you, how did you decide, like how much did, were you able to bring with you on the boat? So we had, um, a six by 12 trailer and that is what we moved across the country with that had all of our stuff we were taking onto the boat. Um, I would say probably a third of it was food storage. So, cause okay. I had taken a lot of food store, like I just had tons of food storage anyway. And when you're on a boat, it was like, it depends on where you're at. Like you get to an Island and they may or may not have things, you know? Mm -hmm. So we wanted to have like six months worth of food storage that we could put mm -hmm. onto the boat. So mm -hmm. that way, if something happens, if we go to an Island and they really don't have anything, cause there's also like supply chain issues. Like it's like blown up in the Caribbean, you know, cause if mm -hmm. sometimes a boat can't get there for two, three weeks and depending on mm -hmm. where we were at from very remote places, like we have to be very, very self-sufficient. So a lot of it was that. And then it was just like gear that we needed. Um, we like clothes wise, we got rid of so many clothes, like all my nice clothes I got rid of, which now I'm a little sad about, <laughs> but like we didn't, you don't need nice clothes. When you're, on a you're not dressed. There's no heels on, no. on a sailboat. <laughs> no, we all had like two pairs of shoes. Huh. Most yeah. well, yeah, about two. My husband, no, he had two. We had two pairs. That was it. And that was fine. Like we had our everyday pair and then we had like a nicer pair, but it was a nicer still pair. Like, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Is there anything that you like really regret? Like, like you said, I, you know, I kind of wish I had those clothes. That doesn't sound like regret to me. It just sounds like, oh, I miss them a little bit. Is there anything that yeah. you're like, oh, I, uh, that was a mistake. I really should have kept that. Is, did you have that happen at all? There were only two things. One was I had this favorite pair of boots and I just mm -hmm. loved them so much. Like when I wore them, I just felt amazing, you know, yeah. and I got rid of them and I wish I didn't. And I have some boots now and they're okay. They're just not those boots, but yeah. I had a nativity set that was like the willow tree nativity set. And it was, mm -hmm. it was special to me because like back when like we were first married and we were really poor. Like I would save for like two or three Christmases and I wouldn't get any presents. And then I would like buy that one piece of the set. So I had had like three pieces and 
I ended up selling it on eBay and I sold it in July. So I didn't get that much money for it, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was a little disappointed in that. But one of the lessons that I've learned is that when you are following the thing that God really wants you to do, that yeah. he will bless you. And when mm -hmm. we moved into this house, it was in October. So I was like, I'm going to find that nativity set. So I was looking on okay. Facebook marketplace and I found the nativity set and it was the entire thing, like had the stable, it had the angels, like everything. Oh. And it was the exact same amount that I had got from selling those things in July. And oh I was gosh. like, Thank you, God. <laughs> like, I, I'm, I have such chills at right now. Like that is, that is so cool. That's just confirmation, mm -hmm. right? It's like, yeah. yes, you were supposed to let it go. And then, and here you go. And then some like, right. wow. Like you get, you get even more than what you thought. So yes. that's, that's a huge lesson in this whole process was just like letting go. And when you really let go and surrender everything mm -hmm. that you will be blessed for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. Okay, cool. So you, you declutter, you're selling stuff, you're letting stuff go, you're packing up. Okay. Then what happens next? So then the interesting thing was like, we thought we had given, gotten rid of everything. We put oh. all the stuff, we fit all our belongings in that six by 12 trailer. And oh. then as we were about to leave, we're like pulling out of our driveway and the trailer is like bottoming out our car. So yeah. we had to get rid of even more. <laughs> oh my gosh. You thought you had like, you had just like done everything. You, there was yes. nothing left. And now, yeah. oh wait, but now more. it was like, we're too heavy. So we looked, we, that was when we got rid of lots of our canned stuff. So, mm -hmm. cause lots of our canned foods, that was really heavy, you know? Mm -hmm. So we ended yeah. up donating ton to the, tons to the food bank. So yeah. like they got tons and tons of cans and stuff but that helped us to be able to get uh okay. we, we kind of made Georgia our home base because that's where my sister lives so we made it to Georgia and the boat that we had purchased was in South Africa so my two okay. younger girls stayed in Georgia and my two older boys flew to South Africa with us and we picked up the boat and then we sailed it across the Atlantic so okay it was that whole thing was crazy <laughs> Cross Atlantic. Wow. Wow. Okay. So now you're, you're deep in, you're into the sailing mode. Like you've left, you've left like dry land behind mm -hmm. and um, okay. So what are, you know, like, are you realizing, oh, wow, we're just super focused on, you know, on what we're doing now. And like, how did things change for you? I guess as a family really. Right. Right. Well, it's, I mean, crossing the ocean and like, we didn't have internet and so like you, there's so much distractions we have in our life now that when mm. all of those are removed, like mm. I was having awesome conversations with my boys and like, we were talking about what it is that they want to do with their lives. And, um, we played games and you just have so much time to just think and process, mm. you know, I think one of the hardest things that I didn't really realize, and it's hard to even explain and I had heard someone talk about this before, but it wasn't until I experienced it that I was like, oh, I truly get this. But because you're sailing 24 seven, you have to have someone on night watch and day watch, mm -hmm. you know, so you're sleeping during the day. You're also awake during the day. You're awake at night and sleeping at night. And so like your days are kind of messed up anyway, but mm -hmm. then you like, if you're on a road trip, you are seeing different things. So, you know, mm -hmm. like time is passing. There was nothing that like mm -hmm. made time pass. Cause every time mm -hmm. you looked out, like it's it just was water. just water. <laughs> so it's just water fun. and and weather, I guess. Yeah. Wow. That is interesting. Huh? Yeah. It plays with your mind. Like that was mentally, it was much harder mentally than I thought it was going to be. Wow. That's so interesting. And no distractions, no internet. So mm -hmm. I remember we were on zoom calls before, uh, but I guess you were closer to land at that point. Well, at that time we had Starlink, but it didn't work in the Southern hemisphere. So we had to wait until we crossed the equator and then we were able to get internet. Gosh. Okay, cool. Okay. So when did, um, you, you all had, um, you had a couple events, didn't you? You had, you had illness and then you also had, um, wasn't there like a storm 
that you guys went through? Yeah. So, well, when we very first left South Africa, we were planning on leaving in that, that morning because we were trying to get out of a storm. So okay. in the Southern ocean, every four or five days, there's just the big storm that rolls through. And it's like 50 to 80 mile an hour winds. Like that's just normal. That happens every few days. <laughs> you know. So you have to time your weather window right. So we went to leave and our autopilot that like steers the boat for you, it was making us go in circles. And so we tried for hours and hours and hours. And we finally had to have like an electrician come out. He just reset the system and it made it work. But okay. it was like almost six o'clock at night by this time. So in my head, I'm thinking it's almost nighttime. Like we'll just stay in the marina one more night and we'll leave the next morning. And our captain, because the first time you cross uh, ocean, you have to have someone that's done it with you. So we had a captain with us and he was like, okay. nope, let's go now. So we're like, okay, we're going now. <laughs> so we left, it's starting to get dark. We had between 40 and 50 mile an hour winds and about 20 foot waves that we were sailing through. Luckily, like, I really think it was a blessing that it was nighttime because you couldn't really tell how scary it was, you know, but yeah. there are times when like, so I was on the first night watch. So I was all by myself and I'm watching the wind and seeing how fast it's going. I'm watching our boat speed. Normal boat speed was like 10 to 11 knots. Like that's pretty fast, you know, okay. for when we were the way that we were sailing and we had this big gust of wind hit us and we started surfing down one of those big waves and we hit 21 knots. Oh, so geez. it's like double the speed that you're supposed to be going, you know? And usually at that point, that's when your boat, like you, it will start to fishtail a little bit, you know, cause it's okay. getting out of control, but our boat was just solid. And so I kept hearing in my dad, my dad's voice in my head, he kept saying like, just trust your boat. Cause I asked him like, how do you, when you're in storms and stuff like that, how do you get through it? You know, and he's like, your boat can take more than what people can take. And you just trust your boat. And so I just kept saying that over and over and over. And the next morning, the winds had died down. The waves had died down. But that was the first time like I had seen it. And it's uh -huh. crazy that when like you go down to the bottom of the wave and the wave is taller than your boat, you know, like just looking at that. And I so I like got my phone out and I was going to record it and everything. And I'm looking on my phone and looking what it really looks like. I'm, it just does not look the same. I'm like, this doesn't look like anything. It doesn't look that scary. I'm like, this really is scary. <laughs> you can't appreciate it, right? Like it's just right. not like <laughs> you can't fathom what's going on unless you're there. Right, right. Oh and God. then while we were in the middle of crossing, that's when my daughter, who was back in Georgia, we found out that she had been, we knew she had been sick because everyone had gotten sick at the same time. My sister is a saint. She has five kids of her own, then took my two. So she had seven kids and she had kind of done the same thing that I did. She sold everything and bought an RV and was traveling around. So she had seven kids <laughs> in an RV they all got sick at once, but my oh, daughter just never really got better. Mm -hmm. And after about three weeks, like she couldn't walk, her legs were swollen and they weren't sure what was wrong. So when we got to St. Helena, which is the most remote island in the world, it's really teeny right in the middle of the Atlantic. Mm -hmm. And that's when we were able to like actually contact her. And my husband being a nurse talked with her of what was going through everything that was going on. He's like, you need to take her to the ER right now. So we then found out that she was being admitted into the children's hospital, was taken by ambulance. They weren't sure what was wrong with her. There was all of these things. They didn't know if she had Rocky Mountain fever or like there was all these different things that they were trying to figure out. So we ended up leaving from um, St. Helena, flying back to the U.S. so we could mm -hmm. be with her. She ended up having two blood infections um, and it took some surgeries and stuff like that to figure out what was going on with her. But she finally is got better. It took a couple months for her to get better on antibiotics and stuff like that. Um, our boat was in St. Helena. We had our captain take it to Grenada and then leave it there. So once my daughter was better, then we flew back to Grenada and then sailed up through the Caribbean. It sounds like there was a whole lot of divine intervention going on. Oh yeah. For sure. Like I even mean, thinking yeah. like that day that we were going to leave that, like, I thought we would just leave the next day. If we would have left the next day, 
then we wouldn't have gotten to St. Helena the time that we needed to. And Mm -hmm. in St. Helena, there is one flight in and out per week. And so we got there Thursday night, the flight was Saturday. So that gave us Friday to prepare, get everything ready. And then we left Saturday. So if we would have been a day later, we wouldn't have had enough time. And then we would have had to wait a whole nother week before the plane was there. Unbelievable. Yeah. So wow. Oh my gosh. Okay. And she's all good now, right? (laughs) She's all good now. (laughs) She's she's totally fine. Completely recovered. Okay. Amazing. Amazing. Okay. So you, you come back to Grenada and now, and now what? So now it, this is where like the fun started because we had our girls with us, you know, we were like doing all the things that I had imagined. And I remember there was a moment in the British Virgin Islands where, um, because I had visualized us on a boat for so long because it took us over a year to sell our house. And this was in like 2021 where like the housing market was like popping. And I'm like, why is it taking us so long to sell our house? Mm-hmm. You know, I see all the reasons now because Starlink wouldn't have been where we needed it to be to get internet. Like there were so many things that fell into place, but I had spent so much time visualizing, like sitting on the beach, watching my kids play and seeing my boat out in the bay. Uh And there was a moment in, it was in Cane Garden Bay in the British Virgin Islands that we just thought, let's go play at the beach, you know, and we're sitting there and I look out and like, I had tears streaming down my face. Uh I'm like, this is the exact thing that I had visualized. So there's so many things that I'm like, visualization is so, so important when there's something that you really want, because Mm -hmm. it may take a while, (laughs) you know, Uh but you will have that moment of like, I have seen this before. Oh, that's like the deja vu that is actually like, you saw it and then it, it came true. Like it actually like appeared in your life, Uh, you know, so our, my a tagline for my business is less stuff, more life. And it sounds Mm -hmm. like this is like the more life part. Absolutely. Like that's the reward for, for being willing to, to, to go out on that limb and, mm-hmm. and do this crazy thing. Like then you have this amazing experience. Your kids are going to remember that forever. Yeah. You have this, you, you have created this, this life. And that's, what's most important. Like they're not going to remember the stuff. I mean, think about growing up. Do you remember the things you got for Christmas or that thing that you were like begging your mom for at the store? Like you don't remember any of that, but you remember all of the times that you spent with your family. And so Mm -hmm. we, that's one thing that's been hard now being back on land is that there's room so we can get stuff, you know, and even because we have this rule that if my kids bought something, they had to get rid of something. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And Mm -hmm. so we still have that rule here, Uh, but they're like, but I have room for it, mom. And I'm like, that doesn't matter. That's not the point, (laughs) you know, Mm -hmm. but it is much harder to keep that mindset when you have a bigger space. A hundred percent. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And so eventually you, you finish the trip and like, kind of like wrap that up for us. Yeah. So we ended up sailing like all through the Caribbean. We made it back to Georgia. And then we, at that point we had had the boat for a year and we had always told our kids, like, we'll do this for a year and then we'll decide. So, cause they weren't really on board at first, <laughs> you know, with the whole idea. Uh-huh. And, um, so when we got to Georgia, we all talked about it and two of us wanted to stay on the boat and four of us wanted to leave. So we decided to sell the boat and then go back to living on land. And that's what you did. Yeah. Amazing. Wow. Okay. So do you think you'll ever like sail around the world again or or take a huge trip like that again? Yeah. I already have my next boat picked out. (laughs) You do. (laughs) You're ready for another round. Yes. Uh, I miss the ocean so much. And just like the piece of it, like watching the sunrise over the ocean there's just nothing like it. It's just amazing. So there are tons of hard times, like things break all the time. There are scary times. You know, we had a time where we were anchoring and the anchor chain fell up. There's like a wheel that, um, makes the the anchor come up and down and the chain fell off the wheel. So the chain was just like running into the ocean, you know, it was super loud, super scary. Luckily the chain was like bolted to the boat. So we weren't going to lose our anchor, you know, Okay. 
But mm-hmm. then once it got to the end, then we have the problem of like, well, how do we lift it back up? Cause it's super heavy, mm-hmm. you know? So we had to get a rope and hook it on and like use some of the hoist to move it up and get it back on. And so they're scary moments, but it also taught us like how to work together as a family. Mm-hmm. And like, there's, there's everything that you could see in your life. That's like bad or scary, or you wish that didn't happen. There's always good that comes from it. Mm-hmm. So seeing oh, that and pointing yeah. that out to my kids and, mm-hmm. and showing them like, yeah, this happened, but look what the result of it was. Right. Oh, I love that so much. Right. Cause it's like, oh, I like my stuff. Right. Or, or I, or I really love this nativity or, you know, my daughter loves that all her stuffies, like she can't possibly survive without them. But the truth is like, if you want to like live this life, then you can't take all the stuffies. You, you, right. you can't take all the, the, the canned goods. Like it's like either, or mm-hmm. right. Like at least for this situation, right. Maybe yeah. not, you know, like maybe you guys kind of like went all in on it, but I think sometimes we sort of think, well, I just couldn't possibly, but mm-hmm. do we know like what, what is the cost of like, just not being willing to let go, mm-hmm. right? Like, what are we missing? I mean, we, we were so worried about missing out on stuff and letting things go. And we're not nearly enough worried about like, what am I missing out on? Like, what is, what could my life be like if I'm not buried in stuff? Right. Right. Like right. It, it, it has a real effect on us. Mm-hmm. It does for sure. Wow. Okay. So you are now you're, you're very interested and super into being reliant and um, you know, I guess on a boat, you got to have the food, you got to have the water, like all of these things. So, so tell us a little bit about what that looks like. Yeah. So my sister and I, like, we've talked a ton about like, how do you be more self-reliant? Cause she, even though she wasn't on a boat in an RV, like you still have to be pretty self-reliant, you know, you're kind of living off grid and all of those things. And Mm -hmm. uh, my sister had a different experience where she like had no, she couldn't do food storage because she didn't have space in an RV to do it, you know? So she was finding ways to be self-sufficient as well. So we have started a Facebook group. It's called the self-reliant sisters. And we just share our experiences of how you can be more self-reliant. Like both of us had solar and batteries and like, even moving into this house, we're on well water. And we're like, if the power goes out, we have no water. So we Mm -hmm. need to at least have a way that we can get water if the power goes out, you know, Mm -hmm. so we've put in, um, batteries and an inverter. So all the things that we learned from living on a boat, we're now applying that into our house. Mm -hmm. And, um, another part of this is after living outside the United States and eating food outside the United States, like we all felt better. We all Mm -hmm. lost weight, like. And we were Mm. eating like all the things that you quote unquote shouldn't like we were Mm. in the French islands. So we were eating like baguettes and croissants and all of their Uh pastries and all of that stuff. So like delicious food that you think is like off limit or if you indulge, you're going to, you're going to pay. Yeah. Yes. And we didn't experience any of that. And a lot of it is because of all the chemicals and everything that's in our food in the U S. So we have found ways that, um, you can source like better flour and more organic Mm -hmm. non-GM food. So we share those in there. Um, my favorite is Azure standard. So it's Mm -hmm. A U R E. I love Azure standard because everything is organic and non-GMO and you can buy things in bulk and they deliver like all over the United States. How that works is you order it all online and then you have um, a once a month drop off and it's going to be like somewhere in your area and you go like ours is at a Baptist church. We go down to the Baptist church, the semi comes, you help unload it and then you take all your stuff. So that keeps the price down. So that's like one of the things that um, we have started doing, like one of the tips that we share about Mm -hmm. how to be more self-sufficient. Love that. Okay. And we'll include the link to your Facebook group because people are welcome to join Mm -hmm. and they can come and and just learn how to be more self-reliant, which is something I think, you know, the people that I work with in our community, they're very interested in that. They're very concerned with, you know, being prepared and being like being self-reliant. So that is absolutely a theme that, you know, that we're interested in. So um, we'd love to send some people your way. 
Yeah. Yeah. That'd be awesome. And the more, the merrier come share your ideas. We share recipes and all of that stuff. So, so fun. So fun. Okay. So like in looking back at this, this journey, that this adventure that you have been on, like what, what's your big takeaway or what, what do you want people to know about, let's say decluttering and like letting, like literally letting go of basically everything in your life? It seems counterintuitive, but when you just surrender and don't, don't like care about having stuff or things turning out exactly the way that you want it to Mm -hmm. just letting go of all of that. There's so much freedom in that. Mm -hmm. And I used to be so much of a planner. Like I needed to know exactly what I was doing. Like I had my whole month planned out like every, like, like six months from now, I knew exactly where it was going to be and all of that. And Mm -hmm. when you're sailing, it all depends on the weather. So, you know, about Mm -hmm. three days and that's it. And so you learn to live in the moment. And when you surrender and just get rid of all of the stuff that's cluttering you and being around you and all that, like you just give yourself a nice like place to just feel that peace that and it helps you to live in the moment because it's the moments that matter the most. It's all we have, right? Like is, is the now, mm-hmm. like that's it. Like we can't, that's the only place we can be is right now, right here, right now. Oh, I love yeah. that. That is amazing. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story. I know that a lot of people are going to be interested. We have pictures. So if you're listening on the podcast, come over to the blog or to YouTube because Brooke has some pictures that we're going to share of their adventures. You guys were all over in the most beautiful places. I've seen some of those photos. So we're going to share those. Um, Thank you so much for being here. I love your story. And I know everyone else is going to enjoy hearing it too. Yeah. Thank you so much. Happy to share. Awesome. All right. Take care, everyone. That's all we have for you today. If you enjoyed this podcast, would you leave us a review? It would really help us get the word out. To start your decluttering journey, go to thedeclutteringclub.com. That is the, T-H-E, declutteringclub.com. We'll see you next time.